All right, can everyone hear me? All right. Welcome to session three of the Navigating Special Needs Family Training. This session is all about organizing family information. We are so honored that you've taken this time to join us um, away from your busy schedules and your duties as parents um, and carving out this time to be with us. Today's objectives are identifying the importance of keeping good records. And then what are some methods for organizing those records? How to create a care map? And then compiling a care notebook. So as you've noticed, we have changed formats just a little bit and chosen to use GoToWebinar. So here are some logistics um, to help you become more familiar with this platform. So as you noticed, you're muted upon entry. And when we come down to discussion time, the host will unmute you and you'll be able to talk freely. If you have questions for the speaker, please use the question box. Um, and the facilitator will gather questions. So if you have them as uh, the presentation is going on, go ahead and chat them on and we'll address them as soon as uh, we have open time. Um, you can use the screenshot function um, to take pictures of a certain slide if you want to capture information that's been shared. Um, you do that by hovering at the top of your screen and you should see a toolbar with a little camera that says screenshot. Now I'm only able to view mine um, in the minimized version of the web or of the, the page. So if you're in full mode, full view mode, you can go to that minimize and then it should appear. But Everybody's may be different. And you can download the five handouts found um, in the handouts section on the uh, toolbar on the side. Um, and you can do that at any time. So when we do open it up for discussion, we have just a few things to keep in mind as we um, uh, want to uh, create a, a space where we're all able to come to the table and share our experience. So we do ask that you share the air. That means uh, share what you have to offer and bring to the table and then maybe step back and allow someone else to share their input as well. And creating a safe space, we want to think about that confidentiality. Um, and so the things that we talk about today and the things that are shared, please keep between the group or in the group. And then speak from your own experience. There is value in your own experience. And so we want to make sure that it's focused on uh, what we've experienced and not the experiences of others. And then um, as stories and information are shared and you have thoughts, only uh, give advice if someone asks you. And then we have our parking lot. That's a space where we can put maybe things that are off topic that come to mind, uh, questions or resources that you maybe want to share, and you can put those in the chat. So here we have a little poll for our icebreaker today. We'd like to know about your organization skills. So we have four options in this poll. One is, I run a really tight ship and the military could take lessons from me. I can usually find things I need. I can find things I need if you give me enough time. Organization, what's that? And if no one is bleeding, it's a good day. So feel free to complete the poll now and we'll kind of see where everybody's at.
Rachel, this is Diane. Um, Seven percent of us run a tight ship. Fifty-three percent of us can find things we need, uh, and forty percent can find things if we give us enough time. Nobody is completely unaware of organization, and nobody thinks if no one's bleeding, it's a good day. Organization doesn't matter. I often think these are kind of fluid too. We may move in and out of them from <laughs> one time during the week. Um, I also want to mention that there will be a PDF of the slides um, that will be shared after the presentation for those who attended um, and we'll also have links to previously recorded sessions. So just a little humor to get you started before I turn it over to Emma. I'm not disorganized. I know exactly where everything is. The newer stuff is on top and the older stuff is on the bottom. I feel like that some days. <laughs> All right, Emma. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. So I don't know for about the rest of you, but this feels kind of like my life most days recently, but um, I always have good intentions of getting stuff organized and most of the time it's the newer stuff on top, older stuff on the bottom. But Emma, um, Emma can you say a few bit words about yourself uh, and yeah. introduction before you begin? And what was that? As a form of introduction of who you are before you begin. Um, I'm Emma Boza. I'm from Haywarden. Um, I'm married and my husband and I have two kids. We have uh, is 12 and a nine-year-old. Our nine-year-old has Down syndrome. So that's kind of what's landed me in the world of um, special health care needs. Um, that's, that's me, I guess. Thank you. Welcome, Emma. So why organize? Um, it's important for provider reports for school, for IEP meetings and for your case managers, um, after visit summaries from your providers and doctors, insurance explanation of benefits, um, appeals and denials from insurance and um, I, like Medicaid I would assume uh, would be another place you could get denials. Um, or all the state paperwork that you have. Um, do you guys have any other thoughts on why you need to organize your stuff or all your paperwork or life in general? <laughs> so, so, you can find the stuff. so you can find the stuff later on, definitely. Um, what works for you? Um, I mean, like I said, most days my, my life feels like the right hand picture with just stacks and piles of paperwork. Um, there's a nice color coded file folders, a lot of stuff, um, the electronic e-files by date or lots and lots of binders. Um, does anybody have any system that works really well for them or that you found that you like? I, I personally, I think I tend to use a combination of all of them. I do have a lot of stuff online and like with the, the medical charts all being, or most of the medical charts being online, I feel that that helps me organize stuff a little bit better because then I can access all of that stuff there. Um, any other any, thoughts? Anyone who'd like to talk can just unmute themselves now and uh, share about their organizational methods. Even if it's just kind of organized, I think 40% of you said you're kind of organized. So what's your kind of organized? And hi, Emma, this is Martha Hanley, and I like to use file folders in no particular order, but if I feel, I feel as, if, as long as I have it in a file folder, it's there somewhere. So somewhere. File Perfect. on a shelf. This is Alicia. I guess um, I started early on. Um, my daughter's now nine, so I have multiple binder fulls now, but um, just with like one binder full of medical records um, and then one separate for IFSP, which is London to IEP, um, just to try to keep the, the documentation for those two things separate, but then also within those um, binders, I tend to be like the, the cartoon was with. Um, you know, newest stuff just gets thrown on top. I hear you. 
Uh, Megan Bolt Costner says she uses binders with lots of tabs. That's a Samira. Um, I found it very helpful to get rid of anything that you don't you don't want it or you won't use it again. I honestly sometimes and I totally on board with that but sometimes I wonder if it, getting rid of stuff like I, I have a hard time sorting out what I need to get rid of so then it all piles up because I'm like what if I need that in 10 years <laughs> so but getting rid of stuff is definitely a, a helpful organization tip um Diane if you want to go to the next slide so some in, we're going to share some information sharing tools um, this is a one page handout I've done for my daughter's teachers and all her her whole IEP team at the beginning of each school year and it helps them have all the information at hand I mean like um, you know what what she's working on what her strengths are what works for her as far as getting her to learn and what doesn't work our vision for what we see for her future and her likes and dislikes um, the last couple years, each year we've started with almost an entirely new IEP team. So to give them this information just on a one page handout has been kind of nice for everybody just to get a little snapshot of who she is going into the school year. Um, and then this Canva template is the template to make one of those one pagers and you can scan the um, QR code. I did make mine in Google Slides. I mean, it's whatever works better for you, whatever format you like. Um, another sharing tool, the Mighty, is a um, news outlet, I suppose you could call it, that shares um, special needs information and articles. Uh, but they shared a blog post on organizing information um, their four main tips were binders or file folders, um, electronic documentation, note and filing apps, and visual boards. And I think if we all kind of thought about it, we probably all use a little bit of all of those. I mean, a visual board could just be at your daily calendar that's hanging up, but I feel like we all use some of that. Um, another handout is the Prep Kids booklet. And I think Diane is that right gonna... it's it's under the handouts there are five of them there that we'll be talking to you can download those at any time the prep kids booklet and the preparing for the doctor visit handout are both um, in those handouts and those are both useful tools you can use to just keep everything organized when you're going to doctor visits um, just have all that information at hand instead of trying to sort through your brain file folders um, crisis prep organization is another important thing that we need to keep in mind. Um, the LOST program, I believe, was started in Iowa City. And it, the QR code will give you a link to those um, to that paperwork. <coughs> Excuse me, what that does, it's a, um, it's a multi-page paper that you fill out and turn into your first responders are um, police department. So they have information on your child. If there's a medical emergency, or in my case, if your child runs away um, or wanders. So mm -hmm. I know on the sheet, it has like information on where would your child typically hide? Um, what are they gonna respond to? What are they scared of? Um, so it's just a good database for first responders to have in emergencies. And then there's also the mini medical emergency binder, and that's in the handouts. And that's a nice tool um, to have everything at hand if you do have a medical emergency yourself or if your child has one. All that, all that um, information is in one spot um, to give to medical providers. Um, does anybody have any questions on either of those or any of those before we go on?
Okay. Um, the next is the care maps. And care maps were created by a family member, Kristen Lind. Um, she wanted to create a map of the system to see how the whole system works together for your child. And so in the center is where you put your family member or your child. And then each arm off of that is providers or different um, entities that work with your child. So you can have medical, education, um, extracurricular, insurance, legal, and then you branch off what each of those people do. Um, I think sometimes if, if you actually do this care map, you don't realize how many people, how many wheels and cogs you have working in your life to keep your, <laughs> to keep things in order and going. It's kind of a, an eye-opening activity to do. Um, the next page is, is a, um, a blank template so you can make your own. And it's got, like I said, it's got the medical, behavioral, the pharmacy, financial, the social and the family, um, other supports, school, insurance, and home and community-based services. And then I had made one for my daughter. And actually looking at this, this is a couple of years old and we've picked up a couple more specialists and a couple more extracurriculars and services. So this isn't even entirely accurate, but like I said, it can, it's a good visual for other providers because I did give this to her school too when I gave them that one pager just so they can be cognitive of everything else that you're you've got going on in your life that it's not just them that you're seeing um but yeah it's it's an eye-opening activity I would definitely recommend doing it and seeing just so you can have that at the forefront. So next I have is, a quick question. Yeah. Oh, this is Megan. So sometimes I struggle with like how much information is too much to share with some people. Like do, does the school always need to know that my kiddo sees 12 different people when they need to focus on one thing? Okay. I, I struggle sometimes. Yeah, it, it, I agree. It, it is a fine line. I mean, I know like for our IEPs, we, we list all, all her specialists and stuff. Um, and I guess, it, I don't know if that comes down to personal choice, how much you want to tell them. For me personally, I prefer that they know as much about her as they can so they understand the why of a lot of the stuff that she does or doesn't do or why things are happening. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? I do think I, I, oh. I was just going to say, I do think it helps for educators to see the whole picture um, or the whole child, I guess, and those care maps and those sorts of visuals help them do that. Because, for example, you know, um, as I'm sure many of us experience, those care providers change over time or, you know, in my daughter's instance, earlier on, we actually had far more care providers than she does now. But sometimes, you know, the results of her diagnosis seen now without that history or, you know, knowing all the different um, therapies she's had in the past, just because she doesn't currently have them to, for them to be able to see that, that listen, this is why she still struggles with this, even though she doesn't necessarily see a feeding therapist anymore. You have to see how far she's come. So I do feel like that sort of thing um, helps them see the whole child. I, I guess I've I always really struggled because we have a kiddo who has some cardiac issues. And so anytime we bring it up in school, it's like, oh, well, he can't do this in PE or he can't do that. And it's, well, he also needs to be a kid. And like there's that well being aspect to it or he still needs to function and he still needs to be in those activities. It looks like um, Allison Drew has a question. Can you unmute yourself, Allison? And if not, um, 
maybe you could type your thought in the chat. We'll catch up if it if she if she types anything. Um, I guess to speak to the point of Diane, if you click on the um, the question mark in that box, it'll show up what she's trying to say. Oh, okay. Thanks everybody for bearing with me as we learn this new uh, platform. It says go to the question pane. Well, that's really mean. And I don't see her question in the question pane. There's a question. Well, there it is. Uh, something about, oh, she's talking about how I have binders full or a pile. Some days are really organized and other days she just throws it in a pile day. Relatable. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go on to the care notebooks then, Emma? Yeah, I think we're we're ready. So the care notebooks, you should have all received your care notebook in the mail. Um, this is a tool that was created by the Utah Family Voices, um, and it's just a central place to keep all your information organized. It's up to you to decide what information you think is important and to keep it updated. Take it to your appointments and to your meetings and um, include your child when you're working on it. Um, Emma, this is Martha. Is that an important caveat when, um, you know, we're doing any of these, um, you know, care mapping templates, for instance, that when deciding how much information to include, is that is it important to also include your your child in those conversations to think about I what would are they comfortable say, sharing? Absolutely, it's important to include them in those conversations. Um, yeah, they need that autonomy to. Right. Be able to so they're comfortable sharing. Right. Um, I guess for me at this point, I'm the more is better <laughs> information sharing simply because she can't communicate that on her own. But as they get right. older and are able to communicate that, absolutely they should be in, involved in those conversations. Right. You know, and I'm thinking of uh, my child with a mental health diagnosis. You know, um, engaging him and and the language around sharing information is has well. Been and the earlier you get them started on the sharing the information and stuff, the more it's going to help them as they age to transition age and age out of pediatrics to adult services and adult medical providers. So the more you keep them involved in that, that whole process, the better off you're going to be. Thank you. In the long run. Um, Dan, was the next slide? Are we is it going through the care notebook now? Sorry, lost track of where I was at. Okay. So we're going to take a look at this uh, website if you want to explain what it is first. The AAP website? Okay, the AAP website is another resource um, similar to the care notebook, but a much broader um, choice of forms, and you can kind of pick and choose which forms you want to use. Um, so that QR code is a download to the AAP that goes to the website, Diane. Yeah, but I'm going to show you the website now. But yes, that's exactly right. Okay. I wasn't sure if the QR was going to go to one of the downloads or if it went to the actual website. No, it goes actually to the website. I'll show you a couple pictures of the downloads, but I want to show you where to get it here. So some of this information overlaps between the two care notebooks. Um, OK. 
got So I think some ones we had looked at was like the respite care is a nice tool to have. Um, therapist, school contacts and IEP forms. I mean, there's just lots of several more forms in there that aren't in the care notebook and you could print those out and add them to your care notebook as you see fit or that fits your needs. Um, there's, and this is from the AAP website, um, an allergy form, a sample letter for a, where would this go to an electric company if you have a child that's on like a ventilator or something and you needed to make sure that you always had equipment running. Um, this is the respite provider sheet. I wish I had four respite providers to put on a sheet <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, uh, a rest sleep sheet. Um, I know for us, we've done, I don't know, 11 or 12 sleep studies. So we were often asked to track sleep. So this would be a, a useful sheet for us to have in our care, care notebook. Um, and then we can kind of just go through the care notebook you guys received in the mail. Um, Right, that's what you, right, Diane, am I wrong? Yeah, if you wanna just hold it up and show how we didn't have it put into all of the different sections, but we did include the dividers, but you'll have to go in and put them in the dividers yourself. So your first, I mean, the setting up your care notebook, and it takes you the step-by-step -step on gathering the information and checking out the pages decide what's most important to you because what's important to me is not going to be important to everybody else i mean it's... and then assemble your notebook um the first tab is the myself tab and that is um i don't know this doesn't show up very well uh the myself section of your notebook is to create an identity identity profile for your child this includes a personal profile family, friends, and a calendar to schedule your child's appointments and activities. And then we go to the My Health Care is next. And My Health Care is the section of your notebook. My Health Care is about is to keep all your information about your child's health care and health care needs. This section will be helpful at appointments with doctors and specialists. Anything to help <laughs> organize the chaos of going to multiple specialists. Um, and then there's my contacts section. Um, the contacts is for the people who provide service and give care to your child and are just part of their life. So you can include school, emergency, and personal contacts. There's room for healthcare providers, um, social workers, dentists, OT, PT, respite, all your teachers, counseling. And then there's a place for just personal contacts, which would be friends and family. Um, and then the next section is my plan. And that section is where you can lay out your child's life and what you would like to see happen in the future. This includes daily, excuse me, daily care, mealtime routine, therapies, recreation, communication, play, and more. So there's a daily, the daily care schedule, a mealtime routine, um, food allergies, foods to avoid, if you have feeding equipment that you're living with. Um, activities of daily living, recreation, social experiences, hobbies, clubs that your child, child is involved in. And I know some of like this section, I know like when we go to the endocrinologist, we have to fill out 
what activities and the frequency of the activities. And so a section like this would be kind of nice to have at hand. Um, a communication information. So if your child uses an AAC device or if they have special words that mean something in their language, and what, it, what it might mean to somebody else, there's a section for that. Um, coping and stress tolerance, social and play, and transitions and looking ahead. So, I mean, the transition starts at like age 14, so when you want to start thinking about transition into adulthood. So that's a nice section to have. Starts earlier than you think. And then my coverage is um, healthcare coverage, medical bills, correspondence, and out-of-pocket expenses. So you got your insurance and your Medicaid. Um, tracking medical bills, your out-of-pocket expense log. All good stuff. In when text time rolls around and have that at hand. Um, does anybody have any thoughts or questions about the care binder or the care notebook? Kylie Clark says, would you recommend one care book or two for divorced families? That I, that's a good question. I don't know that I have a good recommendation one way or the other. I would think if you do two, you would probably want to have similar, have them set up similar, similarly, have the same information. Um, I guess that would depend upon too if one parent or the other is solely doing appointments. If you're doing them, if both parents are doing it, it probably would be beneficial to have two notebooks. I don't know, does anybody else have any thoughts on that? And Allison Drew says, would you recommend two separate binders for two kiddos? Um, I mean, a lot of the information, the contact information and stuff is going to overlap, but I think I would do two separate binders just because so much of the information is personal to them and like the insurance and the explanation of benefits and stuff, that's all going to be for that individual child. So I would... I would lean towards doing two separate notebooks. With the uh, divorced parents and two different, you know, two different households, I would say it probably depends on the relationship and also how close they live. You know, if they're within the same town or so, or if they're like miles apart, separate ones would be best. You know, if there is a distance issue too, Absolutely. and it may be that one may not be into it so it's going to vary i think right you're, you're probably not going to force a parent to to organize all this information so if it were a matter of one parent was all in you might end up making the both notebooks yourself but yeah it's, i don't know that there's a right or wrong answer for that it's probably what's going to work best for your family in your situation Are there any other thoughts on the care notebook? Allison loves it and thanks us for sending it. It is a great tool. I have to say we thought about sending everybody the electronic link and Emma said, as a busy mom, if you send me an electronic link, I'm never going to print it out and find a notebook to get it organized. And we said, good point. We have some grant money. Let's send everybody a notebook. I mean, I don't want to project my, my <laughs> organizational skills on everybody else, but I just know that's how I operate. If I get a link, it's, it's going to stay a link. Amy says, yeah, this is great. And Allison says, I appreciate it being printed as we don't have a printer at home. That's not a valid point. Yeah, I was going to 
um, chime in to say the same thing, Emma. So you're not alone. Um, if it was a link that someone sent me, it would say a link in my inbox. Um, and so that actually, I think, is one of the challenges um, that I face with all of the paperwork and that half of it seems like you get, you know, the EOBs either online or, you know, in the mail, depending on how you receive them, but half of the stuff is online and half of it isn't. And so it gets really cumbersome to keep track of everything because you almost have to have um, a printer at home to either physically print out everything um, or keep two different organization systems. So I also really thank you for sending the binder. Um, I wish I had it when my child was a newborn so I could have started documenting then um, because I've definitely been um, through so many rounds of paperwork and after a while you can't remember when things happened or what you know your timeline looked like exactly so it's this is a very helpful resource and thank you. You know another thing I thought of that you could potentially put in your care notebook if you've got multiple systems going like like I do um, keeping track of what websites or like logins and passwords if your insurance if you keep all your EOBs and you don't print them off and they're all online keep those login information all in that same in that binder and your logins to your to your my charts and to your to all of that because I know I've got several different passwords <laughs> floating around for all those different things so to have them in one central location in a care notebook would be another helpful thing to have have at hand for your multi-system <laughs> organization All right, we're going to kind of wrap things up. We've already uh, been able to share questions and and things that you want to remember. Any final thoughts? What is one thing you're going to do? Got that binder all ready to go. What else would you like to check out or what will you start with? I was gonna say it feels really daunting to start uh, filling all of this out, um, especially when you're, you know, several years into a diagnosis or or a, a care plan. But once it's done, it will be worth it. And so right now, I think the biggest challenge is finding the time and the resources and energy to fill it all out when we're doing so many things at once. But um, I think it certainly is going to be really helpful once it's all put together. Sarah had her hand up. Um, Sarah, can you unmute yourself and talk? Or if not, can you put it in the question box? And Jessica said, I'm just listening and learning. Thank you for the actual book. Excited to organize all my stuff. Uh, Sarah can't unmute. Could you put your thought in the chat box, Sarah? Sorry. I, I know the unmute button works for some people, but not others. I can't explain it, except there must be a go-to webinar gremlin somewhere. Um, I will say one thing that I'm that is on my back to school to-do list is filling out the um, emergency medical inf information. Um, just knowing what the school year could potentially bring. I think it's going to be important for us to have that filled out and ready to go with potential of what can probably happen. So I think that's going to be an important tool for our family. Sarah says, my son's going through the autism testing process and I thank you for this care book. And Jessica says, pocket folders would be great too if you do, if you do have a a paper or if you don't have a paper punch for each section that's a great idea that's a good idea and i thought about that uh, somebody else said it but when you're going through that evaluation process and they're asking you questions from your child's birth and first through third year of life I wish I would have had this tool to have kept that information from the IFSPs and the doctor visits uh, to be able to go through that because um, your brain gets kind of heavy with a lot of different information and those things be are sometimes hard to remember. So.
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you will receive an email after this uh, with those links and um, a copy of the slides and those uh, previously recorded webinars as well. So coming up on uh, July, or I'm sorry, August 7th, we'll, we'll, our presentation will be on Finding Reliable Resources with Riley Samuelson from the National Library of Medicine. He'll be presenting about um, good web-based resources that you can go to for medical information. On Friday, August 21st, first we'll be talking about Navigating Schools with Jill Stevenson. Friday, September 4th, we'll be talking about navigating webinars, or I mean, sorry, waivers. <laughs> and uh, September 18th, exploring care coordination with Martha Hanley. And on Friday, October 2nd, we'll be talking about finding resilience and hope. Um, if you are not registered for one of these, we are sending the links out to everyone, so you may still receive a link for those. Feel free to join even if you hadn't planned. Um, any questions about the upcoming webinars? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, we are going to put in a short evaluation in the chat box if you would complete that for us and give us your feedback on today's session. Actually, Rachel, I just learned that um, after we end the webinar, the survey pops up. So, awesome. and if you don't have time to fill it out right now, it will also come to your email a little bit later. Thanks Great. for your patience, everybody, as we've learned uh, to run this new.